June 9. A prophet denounces Jeroboam. At the Lord's command, a man of God from Judah went to Bethel, arriving there just as Jeroboam was approaching the altar to burn incense. Then, at the Lord's command, he shouted, O altar, altar, this is what the Lord says. A child named Josiah will be born into the dynasty of David. On you he will sacrifice the priests from the pagan shrines who come here to burn incense, and human bones will be burned on you. That same day, the man of God gave a sign to prove his message. He said, The Lord has promised to give this sign. This altar will split apart, and its ashes will be poured out on the ground. When King Jeroboam heard the man of God speaking against the altar at Bethel, he pointed at him and shouted, Seize that man! But instantly the king's hand became paralyzed in that position, and he couldn't pull it back. At the same time, a wide crack appeared in the altar, and the ashes poured out, just as the man of God had predicted in his message from the Lord. The king cried out to the man of God, Please ask the Lord your God to restore my hand again. So the man of God prayed to the Lord, and the king's hand was restored, and he could move it again. Then the king said to the man of God, Come to the palace with me and have something to eat, and I will give you a gift. But the man of God said to the king, Even if you gave me half of everything you own, I would not go with you. I would not eat or drink anything in this place. For the Lord gave me this command, You must not eat or drink anything while you are there, and do not return to Judah by the same way you came. So he left Bethel and went home another way. As it happened, there was an old prophet living in Bethel, and his sons came home and told him what the man of God had done in Bethel that day. They also told their father what the man had said to the king. The old prophet asked them, Which way did he go? So they showed their father which road the man of God had taken. Quick, saddle the donkey, the old man said. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he mounted it. Then he rode after the man of God and found him sitting under a great tree. The old prophet asked him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? Yes, I am, he replied. Then he said to the man of God, Come home with me and eat some food. No, I cannot, he replied. I am not allowed to eat or drink anything here in this place. For the Lord gave me this command, You must not eat or drink anything while you are there, and do not return to Judah by the same way you came. But the old prophet answered, I am a prophet too just as you are. And an angel gave me this command from the Lord, bring him home with you so he can have something to eat and drink. But the old man was lying to him. So they went back together, and the man of God ate and drank at the prophet's home. Then, while they were sitting at the table, a command from the Lord came to the old prophet. He cried out to the man of God from Judah, This is what the Lord says. You have defied the word of the Lord and have disobeyed the command the Lord your God gave you. You came back to this place and ate and drank where he told you not to eat or drink. Because of this, your body will not be buried in the grave of your ancestors. After the man of God had finished eating and drinking, the old prophet saddled his own donkey for him, and the man of God started off again. But as he was traveling along, a lion came out and killed him. His body lay there on the road with the donkey and the lion standing beside it. People who passed by saw the body lying in the road and the lion standing beside it. And they went and reported it in Bethel, where the old prophet lived. When the prophet heard the report, he said, It is the man of God who disobeyed the Lord's command. The Lord has fulfilled his word by causing the lion to attack and kill him. Then the prophet said to his sons, Saddle a donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey, and he went out and found the body lying in the road. The donkey and lion were still standing there beside it, for the lion had not eaten the body nor attacked the donkey. So the prophet laid the body of the man of God on the donkey and took it back to the town to mourn over him and bury him. He laid the body in his own grave, crying out in grief, O oh, my brother! Afterward, the prophet said to his sons, When I die, bury me in the grave where the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the message the Lord told him to proclaim against the altar in Bethel and against the pagan shrines in the towns of Samaria will certainly come true.
But even after this, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil ways. He continued to choose priests from the common people. He appointed anyone who wanted to become a priest for the pagan shrines. This became a great sin and resulted in the utter destruction of Jeroboam's dynasty from the face of the earth. Ahijah's Prophecy Against Jeroboam At that time, Jeroboam's son Abijah became very sick. So Jeroboam told his wife, Disguise yourself so that no one will recognize you as my wife. Then go to the prophet Ahijah at Shiloh, the man who told me I would become king. Take him a gift of ten loaves of bread, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and ask him what will happen to the boy. So Jeroboam's wife went to Ahijah's home at Shiloh. He was an old man now and can no longer see. But the Lord had told Ahijah, Jeroboam's wife will come here, pretending to be someone else. She will ask you about her son, for he is very sick. Give her the answer I give you. So when Ahijah heard her footsteps at the door, he called out, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why are you pretending to be someone else? Then he told her, I have bad news for you. Give your husband Jeroboam this message from the Lord, the God of Israel. I promoted you from the ranks of the common people and made you ruler over my people Israel. I ripped the kingdom away from the family of David and gave it to you. But you have not been like my servant David, who obeyed my commands and followed me with all his heart and always did whatever I wanted. You have done more evil than all who lived before you. You have made other gods for yourself and have made me furious with your gold calves. And since you have turned your back on me, I will bring disaster on your dynasty and will destroy every one of your male descendants, slave and free alike, anywhere in Israel. I will burn up your royal dynasty as one burns up trash until it is all gone. The members of Jeroboam's family who die in the city will be eaten by dogs, and those who die in the field will be eaten by vultures. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then Ahijah said to Jeroboam's wife, Go on home, and when you enter the city, the child will die. All Israel will mourn for him and bury him. He is the only member of your family who will have a proper burial. For this child is the only good thing that the Lord, the God of Israel, sees in the entire family of Jeroboam. In addition, the Lord will raise up a king over Israel who will destroy the family of Jeroboam. This will happen today, even now. Then the Lord will shake Israel like a reed whipped about in a stream. He will uproot the people of Israel from this good land that he gave their ancestors and will scatter them beyond the Euphrates River, for they have angered the Lord with the Asherah poles they have set up for worship. He will abandon Israel because Jeroboam sinned and made Israel sin along with him. So Jeroboam's wife returned to Tirzah, and the child died just as she walked through the door of her home. And all Israel buried him and mourned for him, as the Lord had promised through the prophet Ahijah. Rehoboam's Rule in Judah Meanwhile, Rehoboam, son of Solomon, was king in Judah. He was forty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord had chosen from among all the tribes of Israel as the place to honor his name. Rehoboam's mother was Naamah, an Ammonite woman. During Rehoboam's reign, the people of Judah did what was evil in the Lord's sight, provoking his anger with their sin, for it was even worse than that of their ancestors. For they also built for themselves pagan shrines and set up sacred pillars and Asherah poles on every high hill and under every green tree. There were even male and female shrine prostitutes throughout the land. The people imitated the detestable practices of the pagan nations the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. King Rehoboam firmly established himself in Jerusalem and continued to rule. He was 41 years old when he became king, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord had chosen from among all the tribes of Israel as the place to honor his name. Rehoboam's mother was Nema, a woman from Ammon. But he was an evil king, for he did not seek the Lord with all his heart. Rehoboam's Family Rehoboam married his cousin Mahalath, the daughter of David's son Jeremoth, and of Abihail, the daughter of Eliab, son of Jesse. Mahalath had three sons, Jeush, Shemariah, and Zaham. Later, Rehoboam married another cousin, Meekah, 
the daughter of Absalom. Maacah gave birth to Abijah, Adai, Ziza, and Shelemeth. Rehoboam loved Maacah more than any of his other wives and concubines. In all, he had 18 wives and 60 concubines, and they gave birth to 28 sons and 60 daughters. Rehoboam appointed Maacah's son Abijah as leader among the princes, making it clear that he would be the next king. Rehoboam also wisely gave responsibilities to his other sons and stationed some of them in the fortified towns throughout the land of Judah and Benjamin. He provided them with generous provisions, and he found many wives for them. Egypt Invades Judah But when Rehoboam was firmly established and strong, he abandoned the law of the Lord, and all Israel followed him in this sin. Because they were unfaithful to the Lord, King Shishak of Egypt came up and attacked Jerusalem in the fifth year of King Rehoboam's reign. He came with twelve hundred chariots, sixty thousand horses, and a countless army of foot soldiers, including Libyans, Sukites, and Ethiopians. Shishak conquered Judah's fortified towns and then advanced to attack Jerusalem. The prophet Shimea then met with Rehoboam and Judah's leaders, who had all fled to Jerusalem because of Shishak. Shimea told them, This is what the Lord says. You have abandoned me, so I am abandoning you to Shishak. Then the leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, The Lord is right in doing this to us. When the Lord saw their change of heart, he gave this message to Shimea. Since the people have humbled themselves, I will not completely destroy them and will soon give them some relief. I will not use Shishak to pour out my anger on Jerusalem. But they will become his subjects, so they will know the difference between serving me and serving earthly rulers. So King Shishak of Egypt came up and attacked Jerusalem. He ransacked the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the royal palace. He stole everything, including all the gold shields Solomon had made. King Rehoboam later replaced them with bronze shields as substitutes, and he entrusted them to the care of the commanders of the guard who protected the entrance to the royal palace. Whenever the king went to the temple of the Lord, the guards would also take the shields and then return them to the guard room. Because Rehoboam humbled himself, the Lord's anger was turned away, and he did not destroy him completely. There were still some good things in the land of Judah. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam's reign, King Shishak of Egypt came up and attacked Jerusalem. He ransacked the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the royal palace. He stole everything, including all the gold shields Solomon had made. King Rehoboam later replaced them with bronze shields as substitutes, and he entrusted them to the care of the commanders of the guard who protected the entrance to the royal palace. Whenever the king went to the temple of the Lord, the guards would also take the shields and then return them to the guard room. Summary of Rehoboam's Reign The rest of the events of Rehoboam's reign from beginning to end are recorded in the record of Shimea the prophet and the record of Iddo the seer, which are part of the genealogical record. Rehoboam and Jeroboam were continually at war with each other. When Rehoboam died, he was buried in the city of David. Then his son Abijah became the next king. From 1 Kings The rest of the events in Rehoboam's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. There was constant war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. When Rehoboam died, he was buried among his ancestors in the city of David. His mother was Naamah, an Ammonite woman. Then his son Abijam became the next king. Abijam rules in Judah. Abijam began to rule over Judah in the 18th year of Jeroboam's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem three years. His mother was Maacah, the daughter of Absalom. He committed the same sins as his father before him, and he was not faithful to the Lord his God as his ancestor David had been. But for David's sake, the Lord his God allowed his descendants to continue ruling, shining like a lamp, and he gave Abijam a son to rule after him in Jerusalem. For David had done what was pleasing in the Lord's sight and had obeyed the Lord's commands throughout his life, except in the affair concerning Uriah the Hittite. Abijah began to rule over Judah in the eighteenth year of Jeroboam's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem three years. His mother was Maacah, the daughter of Uriel, from Gibeah. 
Then war broke out between Abijah and Jeroboam. Judah, led by King Abijah, fielded 400,000 select warriors, while Jeroboam mustered 800,000 select troops from Israel. When the army of Judah arrived in the hill country of Ephraim, Abijah stood on Mount Zemaraim and shouted to Jeroboam and all Israel, Listen to me! Don't you realize that the Lord, the God of Israel, made a lasting covenant with David, giving him and his descendants the throne of Israel forever? Yet Jeroboam, son of Nebat, a mere servant of David's son Solomon, rebelled against his master. Then a whole gang of scoundrels joined him, defying Solomon's son Rehoboam when he was young and inexperienced and could not stand up to them. Do you really think you can stand against the kingdom of the Lord that is led by the descendants of David? You may have a vast army, and you have those gold calves that Jeroboam made as your gods. But you have chased away the priests of the Lord, the descendants of Aaron, and the Levites, and you have appointed your own priests, just like the pagan nations. You let anyone become a priest these days. Whoever comes to be dedicated with a young bull and seven rams can become a priest of these so-called gods of yours. But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not abandoned him. Only the descendants of Aaron serve the Lord as priests, and the Levites alone may help them in their work. They present burnt offerings and fragrant incense to the Lord every morning and evening. They place the bread of the presence on the holy table, and they light the gold lampstand every evening. We are following the instructions of the Lord our God, but you have abandoned him. So you see, God is with us. He is our leader. His priests blow their trumpets and lead us into battle against you. O people of Israel, do not fight against the Lord, the God of your ancestors, for you will not succeed. Meanwhile, Jeroboam had secretly sent part of his army around behind the men of Judah to ambush them. When Judah realized that they were being attacked from the front and the rear, they cried out to the Lord for help. Then the priests blew the trumpets, and the men of Judah began to shout. At the sound of their battle cry, God defeated Jeroboam and all Israel and routed them before Abijah and the army of Judah. The Israelite army fled from Judah, and God handed them over to Judah in defeat. Abijah and his army inflicted heavy losses on them. 500,000 of Israel's select troops were killed that day. So Judah defeated Israel on that occasion because they trusted in the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Abijah and his army pursued Jeroboam's troops and captured some of his towns, including Bethel, Jeshina, and Ephron, along with their surrounding villages. So Jeroboam of Israel never regained his power during Abijah's lifetime, and finally the Lord struck him down, and he died. Meanwhile, Abijah of Judah grew more and more powerful. He married 14 wives and had 22 sons and 16 daughters. The rest of the events of Abijah's reign, including his words and deeds, are recorded in the commentary of Iddo the prophet. There was war between Abijah and Jeroboam throughout Abijah's reign. The rest of the events in Abijam's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. There was constant war between Abijam and Jeroboam. When Abijam died, he was buried in the city of David. Then his son Asa became the next king. When Abijah died, he was buried in the city of David. Then his son Asa became the next king. There was peace in the land for ten years. Asa did what was pleasing and good in the sight of the Lord his God. He removed the foreign altars and the pagan shrines. He smashed the sacred pillars and cut down the Asherah poles. He commanded the people of Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and to obey his law and his commands. Asa also removed the pagan shrines as well as the incense altars from every one of Judah's towns. So Asa's kingdom enjoyed a period of peace. During those peaceful years, he was able to build up the fortified towns throughout Judah. No one tried to make war against him at this time, for the Lord was giving him rest from his enemies. Asa told the people of Judah, Let us build towns and fortify them with walls, towers, gates, and bars. The land is still ours because we sought the Lord our God, and he has given us peace on every side. So they went ahead with these projects and brought them to completion. 
King Asa had an army of 300,000 warriors from the tribe of Judah, armed with large shields and spears. He also had an army of 280,000 warriors from the tribe of Benjamin, armed with small shields and bows. Both armies were composed of well-trained fighting men. Asa began to rule over Judah in the 20th year of Jeroboam's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem 41 years. His grandmother was Maacah, the daughter of Absalom. Asa did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, as his ancestor David had done. He banished the male and female shrine prostitutes from the land and got rid of all the idols his ancestors had made. He even deposed his grandmother Maacah from her position as queen mother because she had made an obscene Asherah pole. He cut down her obscene pole and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although the pagan shrines were not removed, Asa's heart remained completely faithful to the Lord throughout his life. He brought into the temple of the Lord the silver and gold and the various items that he and his father had dedicated. End of Jeroboam's Reign The rest of the events in Jeroboam's reign, including all his wars and how he ruled, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. Jeroboam reigned in Israel twenty-two years. When Jeroboam died, his son Nadab became the next king. Nadab rules in Israel. Nadab, son of Jeroboam, began to rule over Israel in the second year of King Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned in Israel two years. But he did what was evil in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his father, continuing the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. Then Baasha, son of Ahijah from the tribe of Issachar, plotted against Nadab and assassinated him while he and the Israelite army were laying siege to the Philistine town of Gibbethon. Baasha killed Nadab in the third year of King Asa's reign in Judah, and he became the next king of Israel. He immediately slaughtered all the descendants of King Jeroboam so that not one of the royal family was left, just as the Lord had promised concerning Jeroboam by the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh. This was done because Jeroboam had provoked the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, by the sins he had committed and the sins he had led Israel to commit. The rest of the events in Nadab's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. There was constant war between King Asa of Judah and King Baasha of Israel. Baasha, son of Ahijah, began to rule over all Israel in the third year of King Asa's reign in Judah. Baasha reigned in Tirzah twenty-four years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight and followed the example of Jeroboam, continuing the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. Early Years of Asa's Reign Once an Ethiopian named Zira attacked Judah with an army of one million men and three hundred chariots. They advanced to the town of Merisha. So Asa deployed his armies for battle in the valley north of Merisha. Then Asa cried out to the Lord his God, O Lord, no one but you can help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, O Lord our God, for we trust in you alone. It is in your name that we have come against this vast horde. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere men prevail against you. So the Lord defeated the Ethiopians in the presence of Asa and the army of Judah, and the enemy fled. Asa and his army pursued them as far as Gerar, and so many Ethiopians fell that they were unable to rally. They were destroyed by the Lord and his army, and the army of Judah carried off a vast amount of plunder. While they were at Gerar, they attacked all the towns in that area, and terror from the Lord came upon the people there. As a result, a vast amount of plunder was taken from these towns, too. They also attacked the camps of herdsmen and captured many sheep, goats, and camels before finally returning to Jerusalem. Asa's Religious Reforms Then the Spirit of God came upon Azariah son of Odid, and he went out to meet King Asa as he was returning from the battle. Listen to me, Asa, he shouted. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. For a long time Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach them, and without the law to instruct them. But whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him out, they found him. 
During those dark times, it was not safe to travel. Problems troubled the people of every land. Nation fought against nation and city against city, for God was troubling them with every kind of problem. But as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard this message from Azariah the prophet, he took courage and removed all the detestable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and in the towns he had captured in the hill country of Ephraim. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which stood in front of the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then Asa called together all the people of Judah and Benjamin, along with the people of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, who had settled among them. For many from Israel had moved to Judah during Asa's reign when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. The people gathered at Jerusalem in late spring, during the fifteenth year of Asa's reign. On that day they sacrificed to the Lord seven hundred cattle and seven thousand sheep and goats from the plunder they had taken in the battle. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. They agreed that anyone who refused to seek the Lord, the God of Israel, would be put to death, whether young or old, man or woman. They shouted out their oath of loyalty to the Lord with trumpets blaring and ram's horns sounding. All in Judah were happy about this covenant, for they had entered into it with all their heart. They earnestly sought after God, and they found him. And the Lord gave them rest from their enemies on every side. King Asa even deposed his grandmother, Maacah, from her position as queen mother because she had made an obscene Asherah pole. He cut down her obscene pole, broke it up, and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although the pagan shrines were not removed from Israel, Asa's heart remained completely faithful throughout his life. He brought into the temple of God the silver and gold and the various items that he and his father had dedicated. So there was no more war until the 35th year of Asa's reign.